I reckon you should. You, you know what? Yeah, Let yeah. you yeah. intro yourself. First, a first. Yeah, yeah. Playtime, Playtime podcast. podcast. Play, Playtime podcast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hello, guys, and welcome to Playtime Podcast. I am Eloise Agostinelli, the best guest that will ever be crossing your screen. And uh, is is your what is and, and ears because you're listening. On, you, what yes. a lovely voice, by the yes. way. Yeah, ears and screen. My name is Eloise Agostinelli. You know that, what? You that, know what? That is a fantastic intro. And yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you did it yeah. because it took you about five takes. No, 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 no. Oh, before, that's, before we go any further, that's definitely saying in the edit. Before before we go any further, nothing's happened here. <laughs> We just yes. decided to hand over the intro to our guest today, and that's about it. But anyway, how because are you? Because you couldn't pronounce my name. Gostanelli. Agost- no, Agostanelli. Ag- Agost- yes, sure. Perfect. You know what? Whatever, Elena. No, but that's good, right? Agostanelli. Yeah, yes, you got it. Yeah. Well, Where does that come from? It's Italian. No way. Yes. I thought you were half French, half English there. <laughs> half, <laughs> half French, half American, but my father's family comes from Italy. Oh, mamma mia. So, yeah, mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be on. Yeah. Oh, we're excited to have you. It's been a, a great start to the episode. It has it? indeed. I tell you what, though, you're um, you're quite full of energy, aren't you? Yes, I've got a lot of energy today. Yeah. She's, a, she's a very With an passionate... extra cup of anxiety. So <laughs> it'll be great. We've all got a cup of anxiety here. Cheers to anxiety, guys. Cheers, 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 um, cheers. Black coffee. Mm. Yum. <laughs> so she's a, you're, you're a very passionate girl, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We we're just talking about this. You are a passionate girl, right? No, I was saying um, how it's interesting because if you talk to my friends, they'll call me passionate. Yeah. But then if you talk to my boyfriends, they call me intense. Mm. What um, do you think you are? I think I'm a bit of both. Yeah. So why would your boyfriend say passionate or you know, said, said person um, versus your friends calling you passionate? What's that about? I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe there's like something about spending like every day with one person mm. so you, are you a bit needy you no no i'm not <laughs> no but i i think you know like if you're if you spend that much time with someone it's always going to be intense right yeah it can feel a bit intense but, but maybe you're just like fucking intense mm. oh god <laughs> <laughs> no, in a good way in a good way some people like that i no. i i do you what are you like do you like intense girls really really depends on the girl what about you I like passionate girls. Yeah, so a little, you, bit, a little bit of passion. Okay, that's good. Yeah, a little bit of added passion. Um, anyway, we're going. Yeah, let's, sorry. Let's, we're, 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 let's pull boyfriend. Let's talk about let's, let's, yeah, actually, yeah, Louise, <laughs> you stay there. What are you doing, brother? I yeah. would love to play therapist. Actually, I love. You love being I a love therapist. I love looking into people's like childhood. You know, you're okay. like me. You're like me. She's great at giving advice. However, I cannot take. I can't take your own advice. No. No. Okay, so um, do you? So when you first meet someone, do you like delve into there? You're like, wow, you've got this issue because of X, X, X. No, I don't say it out loud, okay. but I immediately connect the dots. Okay, and Ooh. I love doing. So, you're, so you can prejudge. You just I, yeah. I to do. <laughs> to start Sweet. off, do you reckon you could connect the dots of Miles, please? Of why he is the way he is. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! And also, what does that mean? At the <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I'm all ears. Yeah. No, this would be interesting. Okay. On a relationship level, like on, on, romantically, want. go anywhere you want. But I, I don't think I don't think there is anything to figure out. Okay, should I take that as an insult? No, but as in maybe you're 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 um you find it difficult to commit. <clears throat> but well, I don't I was, think that actually has hot, anything yeah. to do with your family or uh, or childhood because okay. you come from a really stable yeah childhood yeah with two parents that love each other still yeah. do mm-hmm. still together yeah um i think you were in a very intense relationship at a young age yeah probably weren't given the right taste mm-hmm. of what a healthy relationship should be so that probably shaped your brain and so now your subconscious is constantly rejecting relationships as a result of sweet this first <laughs> which is why you find it hard to commit hell and yeah. then that's me. That's not- so getting a lot of <laughs> attention from women. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous and women and men. Yeah. Okay. And so that probably, you in, know, men in- are animals. So you probably like, you know, <laughs> we are animals. Yeah. Woof, woof, I guess. So your animal side like kicks in. And okay. 
You just enjoy the playground. <laughs> oh my god! As, I'm getting as, really analysed. As Fluff right does. As <laughs> okay. Do you agree? What do I, you think? I completely agree. Unfortunately, I do really agree with you. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to add to that, but you, you're very, you're very right on those points. Mm. Um, what about our young friend here? I don't know you. But from first appearance. Uh, you had what you've had like a five minute chat with him. What would you say about him? I don't think that's a good reflection of me as a person. No, I know, but <laughs> stop, stop defending yourself. Okay, yet. okay, he anything okay. yeah, go, go for it. Go. For it. What do you think? What do you think he's like? A bit like what you've just done with me. Yeah, but I know you like the back of my hand. I know, I know, but you on your first judgment because you just said you know first when you impressions. first impressions you kind of connect the dots. So what do you connect here? Uh, but, uh, the, <laughs> I don't know because I need to speak to the person. Yeah. We need and the by the end of the podcast, I will do it. Okay, okay. okay. let's do that. That's, Should we that's, do that? I like that, yeah. yeah. By the end okay. of the podcast, when we've had like a Do you want to ask any questions about him? Just no, so you know any questions are, are your parents still together? Yes. Do you have siblings? Yes. Older or younger? Older. I had to think about that. Older. <laughs> Girls or, and boys? or I've got one brother. He's older. Okay. So, okay. So, you probably... You probably don't really know how to handle a female on a relationship level. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 sorry, I, how to handle, what is that, what do you mean? How to kind of, because men are from, what is it? Men are from Venus, women are from Mars, or is it the opposite? Is men are from way? Mars, women are from yeah. Venus. Yeah. We are from different planets. Okay. And I find in general, I'm sorry to make a generalization because I don't know. Please When men have been brought up with other girls, mm. they tend to understand the way a girlfriend... I agree with that. ...kind of emotionally yeah. is and behaves. And so when they've been raised with boys, it's, it can be really difficult sometimes. Mm. There could be a bit of a block. Uh, so you could be a bit insensitive. Might be. Is that accurate? Might be. Oh, yeah. that's, that's interesting. So what do you want to know his date in history so you get a bit of a background there as well date date in history oh date yes when was your last oh no you told me you dated someone a long long time ago i dated someone know. about five years ago okay and you haven't and how did that end uh she broke up with me she broke your heart yeah oh i'm yeah. sorry sucks <laughs> no no worries no worries um but i don't know how <laughs> no <laughs> maybe maybe that scarred you maybe that's why you're scared to open back up Perhaps that could be it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, do you, yeah. how do you feel? It's He's weird, turning. It? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? So you, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go? <laughs> yeah. um, now I'm going to read you. <laughs> oh God. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I can't read you. I can't read you. So also let's let's. But I feel like what I love and I love that we started like this. We haven't actually introduced you really. We know who no. your name, but the viewers who may not know who Eloise is. Um, is a very dear friend of mine. I've known for what, five years? Yeah, nearly six. Nearly six years. Um, and we met on a TV show. Yeah. Made in Chelsea mm -hmm. all those years ago. I know. I know. I was 19. You were 19. She's yeah. nearly 25. That, that, is a, that is a young age to go on TV for sure. If, uh, yes, it was a very young age. I don't particularly recommend it. Yeah, no, we've, we've spoken about this, haven't we? I feel we like have. I would have been the shit, though, if I came on now. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I would have honestly ruled yeah. that show. To be yeah. fair, I, yeah, I can see you've got, like, quite, like, powerful... Uh... No, I'm confident now. Yeah. Mm. I'm, and I know who I am, and I'm not scared of people's judgments. Mm. Things that I did what, not what have was, at 19. What was hard for you when you... We're not going to go too deep into main Chelsea because I don't want to anyway. Yeah, I think it just be it's just to get a background on you mm -hmm. for people to 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 understand. So you you came on the show. Yeah, what was particularly hard for you about TV? Uh, I guess uh, reality TV for me was difficult because I couldn't really separate real life with yeah. um TV. Yeah. Um, I remember getting in a lot of trouble quite often because. I don't know if you remember being in Croatia yeah. and there would be like an argument or a misunderstanding with someone. And so I automatically would just call that person up. And, you know, over the the, the, the whole time course of a, a night, there would have been like two arguments. And so mm. the producers would call me and go, this is why we're filming this. Yeah. Like you should be waiting yeah. to actually, you yeah. know, sit and film this. Like, cause now you guys are fine and yeah. you've just had a- <laughs> There's a lot of catch up on TV. I think it's- I can't it... wait. I'm not, a, yeah. I'm not a patient person. If there's yeah. a conflict or something that bothers me, I need to act now and I can't mm. be fake. Mm. Um, so that caused, that gave me a lot of anxiety. And um, 
I also felt quite uh, intimidated coming on because everyone had been on it for a long time. You were very new. I was very new, yeah. You were very new, and I think that's, that's why, why we connected we so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why we clicked. Baby Miles. Um, Baby and you Miles, know what really yeah. pissed me off is that the whole time Miles and I had we had been um, we have never had like a thing. We've never kissed. We've never done anything, and it was automatically just because. What are you doing? No, he's, he just looked at me. <laughs> you don't believe it. No, no, no. one no, believes no. it, by the way. Everyone's yeah. like, you're so full of shit. No, 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 100%. Like, uh, I cross really, my heart. like, nothing ever yeah, happened. And I, it's annoying because um, that's the kind of, uh, uh, what's the word, narrative that was created. Yeah. And uh, that kind of annoyed me because well, I was also in a relationship. And so it didn't make it look. The narrative for me when I got introduced to you was, um, Mars, you're French. <laughs> She's uh, so French. weird. So and then weird. I, I, I met you with Sophie Herman baking cakes. Yes. And uh, they were like, basically, they didn't tell me she was going out with Jamie. And they're like, do you think she's fit? And I was like, yeah, hit on her. I was like, sweet. <laughs> and then Exactly, because that's how Miles was like wired. He's on this TV show. He's here to flirt and have fun. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm dating someone. And I went, oh. And then I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> but then, but what was, what was great about it is that we actually ended up being really, really good friends. We went, we did our first summer series in Croatia. Yeah. A um, lot, a lot of fun. And, yeah. um, and I wasn't really involved, to be honest, because, no. uh, and I situation. say that very respectfully, the person I was with, despite what ended up happening yeah. between us, uh, really protected me. Yeah, no, to be fair, um, he, did. he really protected me and I, I appreciate that yeah. a lot. That's good. Yeah. So let's fast forward. You did that. You left the show. What was it like? Because obviously, like you were saying, now if you're done TV or reality TV, you'd like own it. And you do, you do, you'd be very good at it. Mm. What's um, <laughs> what's the what's the difference for you now from 19 year old Eloise to nearly 25 year old? Eloise? I think um, experience and this sounds so like dark. I said this on a podcast recently, but um, trauma mm. is actually something something that really builds you. And through trauma, which I've endured since, I was really able to figure out who I was, figure out who my friends were, um, love myself, know what I stand for, know what I don't, um, know my flaws. Mm. I still need to face my flaws. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm just way more confident, like even with I, like my style, you know, mm. every, everything just about me is a lot more confident now. And that's why I, 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 you know, I'm on a different path now. I'm doing different things, but it would have been much better and uh, beneficial to, to, to go on something like that at my age yeah. than, than at night, than at night 19. Yeah, um, of course. But yeah, I think confidence. I was like, I was a kid. I was a child. I had no idea do what you, I was doing. <laughs> do you, um, do you think it's an age thing or because of the, the trauma that you're in that place now? Oh, that's a really good question. I meet a ton of like 25 year olds that are not, I'm not saying I'm the most mature person on the planet. You but are mature for 25, I think. Thank you. Um, but I, I think it's more trauma than the age thing for sure. Um, yeah. Experience and mm. I think you, you, disappointments. You, as, as you grow up, you know, I know loads of, you know, 30 year old people who are very immature. Yeah. Who haven't lived a lot of things. Um, I think you can experience a lot at a young age. And unfortunately that, forces you to grow up mm -hmm. you've got to kind of learn a lot and be responsible for your own emotions and that's yeah. very difficult um, very difficult and when you go through that and i know you went through that because you know i was i was with you with part of that you know journey that you yeah. were going through when you were going through some hard times i guess our friendship as well was really tested not tested but i really realized what an amazing real true friend you were because everything came crashing down i was not in the spotlight mm. uh, anymore nor did i want to be but you know i really took a step back from all of it and a lot of people could be like okay see ya like yeah of course i'm here uh, You're chasing not world. exactly yeah. and miles just stood like stayed like right by beside me um and you supported me the yeah, whole time of course. and you I still mean, do like we'll literally not speak for months yeah months yeah literally months years yeah we so, no, not years. Not years, but months. Yeah, months. <laughs> and and still, like, if something goes wrong, like you're here. Yeah, of course. I 100%. really appreciate that. I think it's. I think also friendship is is interesting. A lot of people think, okay, you've got to hang out with someone every single day to be like the best friends. It doesn't mean anything. You no. know, you you. It's all about those key moments with someone and the connection that you actually built over the years with someone, where that means a lot. And also, you got to remember, I think, as you grow older, you you not that you you go on different paths and journeys right so essentially yeah there will be less time for hanging out all the time we're no we're no longer 
teenagers where yeah, you we, can go I, out all the time. I cannot now. stand yeah. cliques as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. The whole like cliquey thing drives yeah. me nuts mm. because I'm so, I've, I've personally like, I didn't have many friends at school. I have new friends now that mm. don't know each other. Like, you know, I have friends from everywhere. I never got the whole like cliquey thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cliques, um, um, also, they're quite damaging, aren't they? They, they can be. It's just a bit pathetic, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, it ties into maturity if you're like a cliquey person mm. it's very much like you know come on you need to be like friendly to everyone yeah like and have an open mind about things mm -hmm. as opposed to just restricting yourself yeah totally but yeah what so what are you doing now then like, so what, what, i talk, talk us through you went on main chelsea you came off yeah what what happened post then i then uh went back to school yeah. and studied naturopathic medicine at a college called cnm uh loved loved learning sorry can we take a backpedal there what what, <laughs> yeah. what is that <laughs> so, did, <laughs> say, say that again <laughs> what, what is it um naturopathic medicine naturopathic medicine so um Ooh. That's Natu a natural, that is a mouthful. Like, like your surname. Is yeah, mouthful. like my surname. Natural remedies, basically, and how you can heal your body through food, Sick. herbs, um, nutrition, and well being are my passions. Like, I literally, I can listen to podcasts and watch TV shows. Have you guys watched 100 to Live on Netflix, by the way? No. no. Watch it. It's is it the, is it the places where yes. the yeah he goes uh, i can't remember his name documentary or it's film it's a documentary it's, i've seen the trailer it looks really, it's really good it's wonderful and he goes it, he goes and visits all the blue zones yeah is uh, it thailand america no, Florida? It's sorry Japan. uh also what are the blue zones so the blue zones are the areas on in the world where uh people are basically living uh to a hundred and plus amazing so and, there's a, and very good living as well like that's crazy around, so like yes where, where are these blue zones then so there's one in japan i can't exactly remember the the name of the towns uh, it's an island in japan mm. um another one is a little village in sardinia mm. there's also a place in california which yeah. i would have never guessed because when you think of california it's not you know the most um i, I would think that there's a lot of pollution yeah. and yeah. you know a lot of um Wait, i want to find i'm because i'm going there in a couple of weeks I go. yeah you should He's you should go look visit. it up um uh, oh Blue greece zone. ikeria okay um is an amazing place uh for that and so basically what he did is he went and vi visited each and every one of these blue zones and interviewed people on their lifestyle and what they do and it it goes we always think immediately like nutrition which yeah. by the way is a huge huge uh yeah. thing uh but s there are so many other things yeah uh, and components like um relationships like being in a lo loving relationship mm. um can make can make you gain six years yeah i i actually um wow. heard somewhere that yeah. if you have a if you have a dog it increases your life expectancy oh, i love that i this is very telling i just spoke about a relationship a romantic relationship <laughs> yeah, and you immediately oh, turned to you know, having a dog really can build that. Yeah, well, you some... Because at the end, you're going to get... This is very analysis. telling. This some, is very some, telling. Some people can have a relationship with dogs. Yeah. Um, this is very yeah. telling. No, but like, it's, it's similar, right? No, it's not. But but but, what, but one's animal, one's human. Yeah, slightly different. one can't talk back, which is another thing that's very telling. Oh yeah, that's always nice, isn't it? Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, We're she's places. got you. We're She's got you. Um, so relationships, so relationships we're, we're very screwed. important. Yeah, <laughs> we're screwed. We're no, screwed. but not just, of course, romantic, but also being around people you really love, um, and that you really vibe off of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I just spilled coffee down me. No, How did that you. not stain you? Because it's kind of a coffee colour. How? I don't know. Let's like continue. Latte. You have got a bit on you. No, I know. Anyway, sorry, please, please, sorry about that, guys. please continue. Uh, don't apologise. Uh, it's all good. Um, what else? Uh, relationships, food, of course, purple sweet potatoes. Purple sweet potatoes? Purple sweet potatoes are the most, the highest uh, antioxidant, antioxidant you can get. What about it's, blueberries? It, even more, it's. Uh, I think one purple sweet potato is equ uh, equ equivalent to eight hundred blueberries. Where do what? I get, what? Eight hundred. I have blueberries every morning. Yeah. What's I need to fact check, by the where, way, because I, I I may uh, be yeah. mixing where numbers, we, but it's it's more it's better than uh, eating blueberries. Where do I get these these purple? Uh, so ones? I tried to look it up, and you basically have to order them here. Right. Online. Have you yeah. have you been eating those while you've been here? No. Ah. Oh. No, I've I'm been, gonna, uh, I'm I've order been some. eating the good old uh, other sweet potatoes, but that's been uh, that was really interesting. Um, also, there was an incredible uh, uh, point that he made about retirement mm. and how retiring is basically the beginning of death. 
not have, to be dark. Well, no, but this is so true. Have you yeah. seen Clint Eastwood? 93 there years old and he's still working there yeah. and hasn't quit. And mm -hmm. who has just quit acting? Um, who's 90 today? Oh, uh, Michael K. Is it Michael Caine? One of the, they was doing comparison and, and they were like, Clint Eastwood is 93 years old and he's still acting, he's still producing, he's still directing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, even though I haven't seen this documentary, but I mm -hmm. completely agree. I think my dad's the same. My dad's retired technically, but he still works and still goes. Still, yeah. So still you paints. can be retired and have a goal and yeah. have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it could be like, he spoke about it on the show, it could be something as small as gardening and yeah. like waking up in the morning and knowing that you have to take care of this garden yeah. or whatever. That's a purpose. Yeah. And that keeps your brain going. Well, and, um, um, that's I, so interesting my dad's 70 and he ref he refuses to ever retire it's what keeps him going and yeah. he looks freaking good for yeah, his that age looks great. Um, I know he's 70 wow and um there yeah it's uh, it makes me laugh because ever since i watched the show i used to take care of my grandmother like she was a child so let's say like we were at dinner and she wants more food i would be the one getting up and getting it for her and we were at a family dinner recently and she wanted to go and get, uh, me to go and get her some food and i literally looked at her and i said get up go get it yourself and my mom looked at me she was like are you okay like <laughs> deep breaths also, also, the, what the is hell that how you spoke to her yeah i said Do grandma I said, Grandma, granddaughter, can you get me some blueberries? She said, Get up no. and get your old damn blueberries. I wasn't as, no, no. I wasn't as okay. aggressive. No. Yeah, you get up. I was or, or you wheel yourself there. I wasn't aggressive. <laughs> I, I wasn't aggressive, but I was firm. I said, No, I love you. Please get up and go get it for you. See, yourself. this is where we see the intensity. I get it now. No, no, joking, but you're, you're doing it for the better good, though. Uh, yeah, it, it's like you got to stay mentally active. I think. Yes, is, is, I wanted is her the point to. In, yeah, um, exactly. In yeah, this yeah. concept, right? yeah, and so we're actually doing them a disservice by uh, doing everything for them. Yeah, um, yeah. And so anyways, it's a great TV show, and I loved it. Okay, so um, it. Th that actually sounds really interesting. That that TV show, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, a hundred with, to live with like. Um, so obviously, you're a bit of like a an expert on like supplements and stuff like that do you take lots of like different things like that and, like for example i've recently started taking like mushroom supplements you know they're quite big yes uh, dirty what? uh no is that the brand <laughs> okay oh no, the brand yeah. no like the like cordyceps lion's mane yeah the, all the Changa, good mushrooms yeah, yeah yeah all these sort of things and i yeah. find it super interesting mm -hmm. do you do you take that i i so i tr i tried but yeah. I, are you taking it in powder form uh, pills. Okay, so that's probably what I should start doing because I've been taking it in powder form and it it really tastes so bad. Yeah. It tastes like mm. mud. You yeah. mix it in your coffee. Earthy. It's incredible. It's really incredible. And actually, this is where the fact check comes in. It wasn't the purple sweet potato that equi uh, is equivalent to 800 blueberries. Oh, nice. It was the tablespoon of mushroom powder, which is right. equivalent to 800 blueberries. Okay, so I'm killing it on that front then. I love how we were meant to talk about relationships. No, this, will, about. this is well, interesting though. I like it. Uh, I want to. I want to continue on your path, though. So you, yes, this is what you studied. This is what I. Studied. I remember this. Um, we'll go through these in a bit. Yeah. Um, dark chocolate is one of them. Yeah, really good for you. I had a lot of that last night. Pecans. No. Blueberries. No. Blueberries. Strawberries. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, um, a Brazil Brazilian nuts. Yeah, I've heard about that. Lots of good selenium. We need three a day. I have that in my side. Three nuts a day. Three nuts a day. They can really protect us from cancer. Three nuts a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> yeah. What about the side? Get those nuts, guys. Side berry is that? Uh, do you know much about a side berry? A side, yeah, that's like your favorite thing. It's the best. Uh, what, are you talking about the place or the berry itself? The berry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so good. That's any really, really berry right. is really good. Loads of peanut butter on top of that as well. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Get that fat in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's an aphrodisiac as well, isn't it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, fact Ginger. check. Fact check. I'm we sure need floppy. Can you uh, fact check that, please? <laughs> Ginger and oysters. Are. Wow. God, I know, I know what so I'm going to eat on my are, next um, date. So Ginger are... oysters. Okay, so uh, something that we need to talk about is obviously we have a very, very beautiful young lady here. Thank you are you. a model, right? I am now, yeah. No, you always have been. Yeah, I've always modeled, but I took a step back and worked for a skincare brand for two years. I remember that. Called Dr. Barbara Sturm. I uh, love doing it. It like you know, um, kind of introduced me to a whole different world, yeah. um, loved learning about it. And then I stopped that. And now I'm signed with Elite in Paris. Sick. And I'm uh, really diving into the whole same. It goes with the confidence thing. I think even if I, I did it at 19, I wasn't really confident. Mm. Um, and I was in a position of um, waiting and almost like 
not begging, but like I was uh, really looking forward to people asking me to work with them and yeah. shooting with them. And Impatience they, then. Well, yeah, and voila. voila. <laughs> but uh, now I'm more like, I'm the one that just kind of says yes or no. And I'm That's in correct. that, you know, I'm I'm in a place where I'm willing to receive whatever opportunity comes, but I'm not like begging and dying yeah. for anything to come my way. I know that whatever's meant to be will be. Yeah. Um, mm. And I really enjoy it. So the, the modeling, something interesting when you say, you know, when you're 19, you felt like you were really like striving to have as much work as possible. And again, like not saying begging, but kind of in that way. Mm. What, because I think modeling is a very tricky one for women at a young age going into yeah. modeling it can really i mean excuse my language but it can mess you up a little yeah, bit it can fuck you up so what, what how how have you how do you feel about it now being a bit older has also the modeling uh time changed because obviously it's a lot uh, it's a lot to do with weight loss yes um and eating disorders yeah um how's that impacted you Honestly, I feel like I'm the wrong person to answer this on whether it's has changed or not. Because you know, I'm a, a brunette with blue eyes. You know, I'm I wouldn't want to speak on whether the modeling industry has changed over time because I haven't really been, um, you know, at the receiving end of it. So it's it, even from your perspective, is it really interesting to see what yeah. you've experienced? What are what are the uh, I guess what are the positives and negatives of modeling? that you you think um for me for what i'm doing personally i uh the positive is meeting new people and i really appreciate how brands now they're not just hiring you for your face they appreciate your beauty and they um you know encourage it and they put it out there but they want you to feel like the brands i work for like chomet pomelato they're jewelry brands i'm uh, very close to um as in their team and uh Dior they they want you to feel like you're part of a family and like you're spreading a message about their brand um and I really appreciate that because it makes me feel like I'm I'm doing more than just smiling at a camera mm -hmm. where, and I feel like yeah it's 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 a lot more than that and I get to go out to these events and speak about why I love to work for them and what I love about the brand and what it does and yeah so I think I, uh, yeah, that's what I love about modeling. And I think the downside is probably saying I'm a model mm. is like... Yeah, I guess it's, it's weird because yeah. a lot of people I feel, say that, don't they? Like, well, I feel like people get, judge, you know? It's yeah. like saying, oh, I'm, I'm a model. Yeah, <sighs> it's it's so used nowadays. I, and also there's so many different types of modeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it always makes me feel like I'm not doing enough when I say I'm a model. Well, I guess um, sometimes when someone says model, people instantly jump to conclusions like, oh, you just like, it's easy, you know, you just smile at camera, but it's obviously there's a lot more to it. Yeah. And I think the key thing is a lot of the time you meet people who are models who have a lot of substance like yourself Thank and you. it's not often put together. Mm. Obviously that's not true and I'm not making that uh, sweeping stereo stereotypical t statement myself, but... Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say that is a big thing, right? Yeah. No, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it. See you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I were. Yeah, I'm. I, I, yeah. No. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. going going into the what I'd like to go from is something that I've noticed over like knowing you, even the the younger you, you were so driven and passionate with everything you kind of wanted to go for or, or had in your life mm. and you know excuse me if i'm wrong but because you have a very good background right you've got an amazing family um the the passion and the power for yourself and giving yourself that self-motivation when sometimes you don't necessarily need to right is really really incredible and i Thank think you. that's something you know it's get it gets gets confused in in our world in what people see and view on social media and it's really it's hard because you know you get comments and saying oh they're privileged or they're doing this yeah. and all that but it's it it doesn't really matter of what or where you've come from as mm. long as you have your own self-belief and also you put the work in yourself yeah you know i think ultimately it all comes down to education as well mm. i i am very privileged and i come from a very privileged background but Ultimately, my father came from absolutely nothing. Uh, he built his way up completely mm. without the help of anyone. Um, and that's something that I've always admired about him and that he's instilled in me. So this might sound wrong because of 
the fact that I am privileged, but I wouldn't consider myself as a spoiled little brat. Mm. Uh, I, I I have beautiful things, and of course, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but. But uh, also, you got to remember, like your father going from him not having anything and building his life to where he is. I I know as a man, and we can all agree on this. Is mm. I, I want to be in a position in my life where I can give my children everything. Yeah. And I would never I want that. anyone to take away from my child knowing that I built everything from the ground exactly. up to give them the better life. Yes. And also my dad was, is an incredibly generous giving person, but he doesn't want, he never wanted any of us to grow up with this mentality of entitlement. Mm. So everything I've always had, it's been earned in some way or sh- shape or form. I like, I've been working since the age of 16. He made me work at, remember Seapress? Yeah. He, I was working at the bar in Seapress. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, I, because I had told him I didn't want to go to university and he was like, well, <laughs> I'm not just going to like give you an allowance to do yeah. nothing. So you're going to work and yeah. you're going to make your own money and you're going to see what that's like. You're going to wake up early in the morning. So he's instilled that in me. And so did my mom. My mom could have stopped working when she met my father um, and chose not to. And I really like, it's really taught me that especially as a woman, you need your own independence. You cannot be relying on a man. It doesn't matter who you're dating. doesn't matter who you're married to. It can go away like at the click of a finger mm. and then you don't know where to go. So I would love to ask you a question actually about maybe dating per se. Yeah. Having your father and seeing what he's built over you know, his life and the success he's had, does that give you any maybe not pressures but do you feel like when you date a man there needs to be certain requirements within oh she's smiling so no, and, and this is not by the way your answer is not bad like whatever you're going to say about this do you feel like you could <laughs> date someone who's not has or maybe has not got the success that for example your father has but is hard work it and he's going to go to that and hopefully get to that success would yeah. you be able to date someone like that first of all my father's success is not my success no of course you but know? i see i see i'm talking in a sense as you've grown up with your father's success okay so, so seeing, seeing that, that as, yeah. as a father figure yeah and, and as a man present in your life yeah when you search for your spouse or yeah. the, the man that you mm. want to date is that how does that have an effect i think for sure drive is what i look for in a man uh, like it doesn't matter what they have or what they've built so far but drive is something that i find very attractive in a man um and when i look at my father it's not really what he's accomplished that i admire the most it's the fact that he still has that drive mm. um so yeah for sure i i feel like it's not attractive to be with a man who's kind of just bleh. And yeah. doesn't really, you know. Goes the flow. But by the way, I feel like same thing for a man. Would, would you guys want to look for a woman who doesn't really care to do anything, or you but know? But I think, yeah, no, I agree. But I think it's interesting what men and women look uh, for in their in their kind of future spouse or their future relationship. You know, I think I would want, you know. Uh, my next girlfriend or, or you know wife to be to be driven passionate successful in her own right yeah but it does but it's not a key factor for oh me. it's not a key factor for yeah. you. drive is a key factor so or no? d- being driven is, is really yeah. it, because i've, da- I've dated me someone too. who's kind of very pretty but doesn't do anything yeah and you, at the end of the day i like to be mentally stimulated yeah. by good conversation yeah and if we're sitting down and you've said to me i went to the tanning salon and got my nails done yeah i'd be like Cool. But it could be anything, right? It could be like, I listened to an amazing podcast today. It, it's also to do, do with passion but and hobbies. Like, saying. oh, I listened to this amazing podcast today on, I don't know, Blue Zones. Or, you know, yeah. if you're not showing any uh, but that's the thing. interest. It does, it, for and, us, it doesn't, I don't know what you think about this. It doesn't well, necessarily mean but work. That, that being said, though, that's not necessarily drive, though, is it? That's just having some substance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's having true. Some, yeah. Having that, that's some not, that's not drive. That's like, that, true. I, I, that's I wouldn't true. say that's drive. No, I'd say that's right. more like you're right. being... Hobby, having hobbies. N- um, well, I think more just having, like, a, a good life view, having an opinion on things. Yeah. Not just being, like, you know... <sighs> taking an interest in certain topics perhaps that yeah. that type of thing as opposed to just being like someone that just fucking like is a complete airhead yeah, yeah. no um, yeah but 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 drive as well yeah i get what you're coming from I, it is a deal breaker for me for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. for yeah. you too 
Yeah, I th- no, I think I think it is. I think uh, you know, drive and and being passionate about something is really is is sexy. You know, this coffee is making me shake like a chihuahua. Well, then let's take that away from you. It's fine. Weirdly, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the Scorpio side of me. <laughs> yeah, you are Scorpio. Oh my well, god. What does this What does the Scorpio mean? Literally me. <laughs> you're, I'm, you're, I'm the spitting image of a Scorpio. Yeah. What, yeah, what, yeah. what are Scorpios? Talk me through it. We're very passionate. We're very, we can be very intense. Stubborn. We're very stubborn, oh, but we're very stubborn. loyal. Like okay. Scorpio. We're very black and white. Okay. Um. Yeah. What signs are you guys? Saggy. Aquarius. Aquarius. Why are you so surprised? You know? no, I, I forgot that you were my sister's Aquarius. That's why we get along. Is I feel it? like you could be a Leo, Miles. You probably have some Leo in you. I do. My uh, rising is Leo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell! How did you know that? Yeah. All right. For what sure. else? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's some good uh, my, mental mind reading there. Um, <laughs> mental mind reading. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Wh- whatever you want to call it. So, okay, we touched on that. Mm. What are the sort of like red flags? Also, let's talk about rather than just talking about red and green flags. Yeah. So, dating. Mm-hmm talk us through your experience have you been um like have you done online dating before what Ooh, your... i've never done online dating for example no one ever slides into my dms ever <sighs> ever have i ever checked show, text... show me your dms there we go. Show me your front... you. yeah i'm gonna watch these let's let's have a look <laughs> i bet you so many guys slide in okay sorry let's continue so i've never gone on, on dating tracks. apps yeah um i don't think i ever would but i like to uh, things to be organic yeah. okay um but at the same time i'm kind of a homebody so i don't really i'm not going out you know every weekend uh so do you, I, can I ask you a question mm, do you drink i i mean yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> i was a it was an allergic question i by the way. Um, <laughs> i used to drink less yeah because i remember i should you... not be saying this like this but i'm not i'm not a heavy drinker but i've i've learned to enjoy alcohol a bit because you hated when i met you i think you had your first vodka shot with me i i, I did i remember where like we were she had never we had were on vodka. the king's road yeah. in that little bar yeah yeah sweet yeah and now now alcohol and now is i've turned free to throw. tequila yes good i stuff. love a tequila good. with an orange slice Ooh. Love. Nice. What? Nice. So do you do you shot it or do you I just shot sip, it. It, sip it? I shot it. Okay, nice. Uh, it's With like, a bit a bit of salt. No, bit that's the thing though. I enjoy I enjoy feeling a bit tipsy. What mm-hmm. have you ever done a tequila suicide? No. Have you heard about these? That doesn't sound very. Appealing. So basically, when I was uh, <laughs> when I left school, <laughs> yeah, um, I went like I went to Thailand with some friends, and there was this bar where you basically got shots for free if you did them as a tequila suicide. Basically. Um, what tequila suicide is you sniff the salt and then you uh, you, sh- you shot it in your eye uh, and that's how I used to roll <laughs> does that even get you drunk yep. that must fuck you yeah, up yeah that actually gets you really drunk but what about your eye yeah, what about so, your nose so I mean I, yeah I don't know oh my god it, it, it absorbs it still <laughs> as in I don't know how like the, the yeah, science yeah, no, behind yeah, yeah, yeah. it no, but, but like, it gets it you burn? yeah it gets you fucked your, oh, also wow. how yeah. do you surely you have to leave the shot on your eye for a while because all yeah. of that to go in yeah it's quite messy that's for sure <laughs> that, that, um, that and you, all, you so also look like intense. an absolute retrobate as well you're at the bar oh my goodness um, but yeah I mean I don't do that now as a disclaimer but okay so um so you're okay i guess also you've grown up a little bit now so you're enjoying alcohol yeah i'm more. enjoying alcohol i i really enjoy uh getting a bit tipsy when like but not all the time of yeah. course but mm. um I'll, always with reason and i, I never go overboard yeah I, I, that, I, by the way like it's completely normal to drink like it's it, we're not from a, like i love to drink as yeah well. um it's like completely you don't have I to have a, you don't have to have a reason to drink either no. you can just enjoy drinking. yeah i i love having a really healthy relationship yeah with it. if you have yeah. a really healthy relationship with alcohol it can be really fun but unfortunately mm. some people like yeah they just can't Binging. but i think uh, also yeah. unfortunately in the uk we do have you know uh, unfortunate you know culture or on alcohol which is binge drinking and, i know and, it's really intense and, you know it's you know going down to the pub uh during work at 1 p.m in the city and having a couple of beers mm. and it seem it's normalized and I, I i find that you know when i was younger saw it as a normal thing because when you're younger you kind of want to get drunk all the time and yeah. you drink all the time but when i look at it now like if i walk by a pub in the city it's kind of sad i, I kind of be like wow it's a beer at 1 p.m on yeah. a wednesday i i disagree with what you're saying though because 
it's all to do i think you can do that and still have a healthy relationship is when you're sort of dependent on it and using it to mitigate how you're feeling how like negative things in your life i know a lot of people who just love to go yeah they enjoy it they enjoy it and people do it also in the city a lot of people do it for work to do like um you know meeting stuff like that that. but for for me that's where i see that there's a problem because a lot of my friends who do work in the city who do rely on alcohol to be with clients to serve clients and be like okay i need to you know the, the every every day it is an unhealthy relationship because every day they have to be with a client. They have to talk, they have to go down to the pub or they have to do these extravagant dinners and have a whiskey, have this. And it's all week. Yeah. And that's where it, it, it's very tough because that's why I say okay. city. I don't say necessarily going for a drink in the pub is unhealthy and you have an unhealthy ha- uh, relationship with it. But what I've noticed, and again, I, I don't mean to generalize a lot, but because I do have a lot of friends who do work in the city and I, I've i seen it a lot, hmm. it, it is it does feel like an unhealthy um, a relationship that people don't acknowledge yet. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you for some people, but I don't think it's true for everyone because I know, like, I won't name their names, but we know. A, yeah, of course. And I think you know how I'm talking about. It. He has a re- he works in the city. He's got a very good relationship with mm. it. He's a lovely guy. Whereas some people, particularly like I know that work in like insurance and stuff like that, it's very heavy mm. drinking stuff like that. But it depends. It's person to person. Yeah, it? of course. Anyway, we went on a little Sorry, <laughs> me, me and Miles having a little debate again. Um, um, back to you. So let's go back to the modeling and dating. Um, so you've never been on a... This is actually a good question. Do people assume... Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm a smart kid. Wow, guys, listen to this. Yeah. Know what's about I, I have a question. <laughs> I have a good question. Um, yeah. go on, not, it might not be a good question, go but it is a question. Uh, a good do you, question. Do you get people have having assumptions about you? For yeah. your looks, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. What, what's the most common assumptions they've well, had about my... you? What gold digger vibes? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, she got offended by that. No, I've, I do not like a gold digger because uh, I got the gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just. I think it's. Ugh. Anyways, yeah. um. Um, I basically, when I uh, ended uh, my uh, the relationship that I was in when yeah. I met you, I was going on dates with people, but I have a serious issue and I need to work on it where I cannot look at someone in the eyes and tell them, I'm sorry, I'm just not uh, into it anymore. Right. So I just ghost. And it's a really bad trade. Mm. And I and I and I would do it a few times, and I, I yeah, that's just literally how I operate. Like I will not be able to look at a guy and be like, I "I'm sorry, like this was fun, but like, I, not feeling it, not for me." What? what I just why is ghost. that? I can't, I don't know what it is. I can't look. I can. I feel like it makes me so anxious to break anything off, and so I just distance distance myself. Mm. And I think that created this kind of narrative that I kind of pick up guys and drop them. Mm. Um, but then I met my recent boyfriend and was like madly head over heels in love and I had no intention to to drop him. So that's something I had to kind of explain mm. um, for him to like, you know. Understand. Understand and yeah. trust that I wasn't, yeah. you know. What's the... Um, that's an assumption I've heard people say like about me, which is it's not true. I, I don't... I don't go into something to drop someone. I'm just, I'm just really bad at. You're very, you're, you're too something. nice. Not even honestly, I'm not that nice. Clearly, because like I'm like. No, ghosting, but, you're, you're, but you're, you find it, it, you know, it's, I know a lot of people do who find it hard to just find it awkward. Yeah, I think I think it's quite a common thing. Yeah, to have. I don't think it's like. Um, Are you a big yourself, ghoster? Am I a big ghoster? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> I'm not. I Mar- feel like you might Mar- be. Mars is laughing. Even though he doesn't even know. No, I know. But he's like, Pfft. no, no. It's just because the way you answer, you were like, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, look, I, not. I have. I think like we pretty much have. anyone. Yeah. Er, like, I think everyone's had at least a scenario where they've done it before, and yeah, I have done it before. But I think um, it is very difficult to do it in person after oh, a date. I like can't. It um, like, gives me. However, however, following up after a date and sort of like just saying where that end lies like it's easy to just not say anything isn't it what well, but I it also, is i it also is best. mislead guys hugely yeah Genre, i was in this i was on a date with this guy like i don't know what it is about me but we were on a date i had been uh i had broken up with a boyfriend yeah and he 
I said to him in the car, like, I want to take things slow, but it, but we kissed. Mm. So maybe that was misleading. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, I'll, I'll tell you right now, that is definitely misleading. I want to take this slow. Yeah. <laughs> and then next thing I know. I'll take this slow, now kiss me. <laughs> yeah, do it now. Yeah. Next thing I know, I get home. Three hours later, I get a, a a plane ticket to Egypt. Oh, wow. Wow. We do not hang out in the same circle. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, who are these people? But yeah. I remember being on the phone to my mom going, what is wrong with me? Like, what if I, how, I don't understand. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with you. I think, uh, you know, something maybe you- I'm just not clear. This is what's great with you, and is you don't know this. Well, maybe you do, but you don't act like you know this. You're very, very, very beautiful. Okay, yeah. you are, you are very, very beautiful. And I think, you know, it is one of those things when, you know, it's happened to us when like, you go on a date with a girl who's very, very attractive. Mate, don't, don't uh, put it in a frame where Sorry. We, you, you made that sound as though it was like, so are we. Oh, no, 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 that. Okay, so fine. No, 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 because that, that's not the. No, 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 no. Listen, you haven't let me finish. Okay, oh sorry, my God, I was going to say, it happens to us where a girl will buy us a plane sorry. ticket to And Egypt. I can relate because it happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm saying it happens to us when we date a girl that we find very attractive. Right, yes, yes. And yeah, sorry, we, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> like how you just. Didn't let you finish. You, know, you didn't. <laughs> but it, it happens to, and I can already, I can already think about the girls that I've, this happened to me with, is where you're like, you're besotted by someone. Yeah. And you get, re you all of a sudden make this story in your head going, oh my God, I'm, we're going to have the most insane relationship. <laughs> I already planned the, the first year of our lives together. We're going to <laughs> Egypt, baby. We're going to Egypt. It was so intense. And I was like, and then poor guy, I was, I got upset. No, I'm really not nice. I really need to work on this. I got upset at him. And I was like, I told you I wanted to take things slow. Like, why are you putting me in this position? I'm, this is so uncomfortable. Where I should have been like, thank you. Like, that's so sweet. I think yeah. there's a miscommunication. And he was so uncomfortable that he said it was a joke. Oh, oh. Are, you, are you joking? I know, he was like, I was just kidding. Damn, I was just kidding and I, I felt awful. But that that's something I'm trying to work on. No, but I get it. what I would say is that, you know, a, a lot of guys would have taken that trip, would have been like, you know what? Whatever. I don't, even if I don't like the guy, I'm going to Egypt. You know no, what? No, I can't. But yeah. That's amazing. I yeah, can't. no, that's great. I get such an ick. The moment I get an ick, it's impossible to get I me think... out of my funk. It's impossible. Out of your funk? Like my funk. Isn't that What's what that you what? say? No, that's <laughs> not ick. Out of my funk. What you're, is you're, that? You're, you're not dancing. Out of my funk. Can we cut this? I've been bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're giving that in. Oh, like it's a funky, funky. A funky, like, can't get a funky vibe? Can't get like a funky funk. ick. I can't get like my funk. Like it's funky. <laughs> Like it's funky. It's definitely yeah. not funky. Funky, Ooh. like like smells funky. Yeah, yeah. It, like uh, my rut. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, not yeah, the yeah. word you use. You're no, no, no. It's, it's fine. D yeah, don't. <laughs> like, it's it's a normal word. To use. Yeah. Um, it is a real thing, you guys. No, but I, I, hate, I suffer from I an ick. Hate the word it. Yeah, I, I hate feeling an ick. Yeah, yeah. True. I mean, you know. Some some of the icks you see people post about online are hilarious. Yeah, like, have you seen the one? I was like, like, I hate when I see oh, a yeah. man. What was it? Um, if he trips over himself, it's an ick. Oh, such an ick! Yeah. Such an ick! Oh, oh my god! Or or if he falls, it breaks my heart. But it's like I don't want to sleep but, with you. How is that an ick? What you, if he what, like? But I don't get oh, it. I'll tell you what else is an ick. Oh god! Skinny jeans and sneakers. Ooh. That's that's not us. Skinny jean. I don't mind sneakers. I love a sneaker. A skinny jeans. A skinny light yeah, blue no. jean with a sneaker. Ooh. Go away. Yeah. Go away. With the rip. Go. Oh, go away. Yeah. I actually saw one that made me laugh the other day. Um, some girl wrote, uh, "My biggest sick is when people, someone claps when the plane lands." <laughs> Oh, that is an ick. Or, or there was another one where it was like, <laughs> "That is so." Funny. When, or when uh, someone says "bon appétit." Bon appétit. You're French, though. Bon appétit. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's awful. Um, There's so many icks. But, but Petit, why is that? Why? I, I don't think it, like, do guys have many icks? I don't know. What do you mean? Like, do we have icks? I feel like there's if this girl, whole... like, smells. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's just, like, that's just... That's cleanliness. That's just... Uh, like hygiene. That's, you, know, you know what? That's actually, just, an like, ick, general... An ick, that's the general ick. rule of attractiveness, no. though. An right? ick is if a girl doesn't have a good nails for me. Yeah, so... I think I think there's small things that I think are quite important and like taking care of yourself and hygiene obviously are really important. But I think for sometimes I'll look at a girl who's 
beautiful and she like bad nails. really bad nails and mm. I'm a bit like oh that's I don't know why but a bit of no I wouldn't say an ick per se but I'll book you a nail mm, mm, mm. salon session no I get it it's yeah. a, it's because her having a and it doesn't have to be like a really expensive yeah. manicure but no, it means it's, that it's, she yeah. has self love to take care of herself 100%. and so that's attractive and I think also, that's basically the, the, the thing and behind it, it. yeah it is, and it's still part of hygiene I guess I don't know I think no, nice is. nails is, is nice it's hygiene I yeah. agree I think it's important um, what are your ex? I mean, I don't think I really have ex. I think stuff you're describing is just like general attractiveness. Obviously, like hygiene. Like okay, what about right? a, a, what about a girl who is <gasps> a guy root? who splits the bill? Oh, hey. this, this is a topic. We go so on okay. a first date. Okay, first date. Okay, you're you're the man has to pay. How yeah. many dates in will you split, or will you ever split? So I will always offer. To, uh, uh, out of politeness again i'm not entitled but i love a gentleman yeah mm -hmm. i love a man who opens a door for me i love a man mm -hmm. who you know so if we're on a date and you have come like you have chased me to go on a date yeah you've been, He's asked you on a you've date asked me on a date yeah. to expect me to pay or to expect it to be split i feel is not like the That's gentleman like fair. thing to do on the first date mm. and then of course like uh, uh, m uh, maybe date three mm. i would say yep. it, it's okay to split but i actually would prefer to pay for the both of us than splitting so this mm. is interesting i've sp we've spoken about this and i think dating the way i see it mm. is if i've asked you out I'm paying regardless, right? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If you don't offer, I find it a bit rude. Yeah. Knowing I'm going to pay, yeah. I still want you to be like, do you? No, don't worry, babe. Yeah. I've got this. Yeah. What I do find that I actually haven't experienced a lot um, is, let's say we've gone on four or five dates now. I would, instead of like you saying, going oh, on a sixth date and then we split or whatever, it's more like if you had an idea and you said, babe, um, let's go, I don't know, rock climbing or any, yeah, something yeah, yeah. really fun. Anything, yeah. And then you paid for that experience. For me, that's like, you're both putting effort into dating each other yes. rather than me. Through different experiences. Exactly. Yes. So in, if I'm asking you to do, like, I want to take you out and I'm pursuing you, it's up to me to to deal with that. And mm. then once you, let's say you've, okay, I actually like this person. You know what? I want to treat him a little, not treat him, but I, I want to do something special for both of us because he told me he likes this. Yeah. I know golf. Like, I'm going to take him to top golf. Yeah. And it's going to be a fun little date. Yeah. And not like you're going to be spending loads of money on it, but it's no. like the small things mm. make it, also, as a guy, I think, mm -hmm. makes it, okay, she's invested in me as well. Yeah, exactly. It's not just me trying and trying and trying because I, I don't know if you've gone through this, but you've dated someone and it's like, you feel like you're just doing everything all the time. Yeah. And there's no effort no back. Effort and it's not back. about her paying for things, no. but it's about, oh, let me put effort into this relationship, yeah. the beginning of this relationship. And yeah, I personally believe that it's okay to be submissive to your man sometimes and to let him kind of take the reins, but to then do something in return. It's, it doesn't mean that he's walking all over you or that yeah. you're lesser than. It just means that as a woman, you're bringing something different to the table whilst he's bringing what he can as a man. It's really refreshing hearing that. And I think also that we live in a society now where because women are so... Um, uh, you know, into fighting for their rights and their place, they kind of emasculate, and this is not a general, like, demasculate? Yeah. De or emasculate. 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 emasculate a man sometimes, and it kind of makes a man, I'm not speaking for you guys because no, I'm no, not no. a man, but sometimes it's okay to kind of keep that masculinity. I think it's important. And to kind of have that yin and yang. What In your in your perspective, what what is, why is this shift happening? What is uh, What has happened um, I think it, for women at the moment, feeling like they need to, I guess, have, you know, I think it's amazing that women are super independent. Like my sister's super independent. Yeah. Um, you know, but independence has nothing to do with it. I know, but that's what I think is con being confused. Yes. It, I, I do feel like women sometimes are like, you know, oh, well, no, what's going on in society is the independence is kind of overshadowing what it means to be a woman or what it means to be a man. And it's like, no, women need to do all this and I don't need a man. It's like, wh why, why do you feel like there is a bit of a gender battle at the moment? Honestly, I don't know. I can only assume that it must be because a lot of women have feel have been have felt oppressed mm. and um, silenced. That's the only kind of reason I uh, yeah. have. But I can explain. But I don't. Um, I personally don't feel the need to. 
Yeah. Uh, I fight for women. I stand with women. I'm a huge girl's girl. I do not tolerate disrespect on any level from a, a man. Um, for my friends, like in that way, I'm really strong. But I think it's important not to go overboard and and to kind of, yeah, cut a chop a chop balls off. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's very. It's 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 interesting to hear because I think. Um, you know people are, are a little uh, even i find it really difficult to talk on the matter mm. i'm not first of all i'm not a girl i'm not gonna sit here and, and say what women are feeling like or what they should be doing or what they deserve or how they should be treated or what they want in their life mm. but um there is a there is a big shift and it's taken away and go bring it back to dating per se you know i've spoken to a lot of my friends who do you feel like they don't know necessarily how to approach women maybe anymore? Yeah, no, or, it's scary. Or feel like they don't know how to act in a relationship anymore because they don't feel like the, let's say the old ways mm. are okay anymore to yeah. hold a door for a girl Just anymore. to add a statistic, a, a statistic. Statistic, statistic in there. I heard the other day that 80% of men haven't approached a girl in the last year. Wow. Because they're scared. Yeah, I think it's a combination of... Um, the disconnect with sort of like online dating and not building the skills to be able to approach people and have those interpersonal skills mm. twinned with sort of like me to that type yeah. of like movement and mm -hmm. that vibe um mm -hmm. so it makes it quite difficult so yeah it's it's pretty much like no that makes your, sense like yeah it's crazy because obviously for you you're like everything's organic with, oh yeah i can't i'd rather be alone but what as in you'd rather be alone than i'd rather be alone than go on a dating app really and forcing it and okay I, I fine i'd rather be alone um i have my friends i have my family and I, I would yeah rather be yeah alone. yeah it's just it's super interesting i completely agree with you i think it's like um it's way better for things to be organic i have very little faith in online dating and apps and stuff Me like too. that because it's just like how do you build a connection with someone like over an app and where by the way instagram falls into that bracket in my opinion yeah. too by the way yeah but, it's, it's but, a new data now yeah it's um it's pretty crazy isn't it <laughs> the last question well not last question what would you uh tell your younger self now going back to 19 when i knew you what would you what would what are some words of wisdom that you would tell yourself now going through the experiences the trauma that you've gone through life and uh, what would you say to her i'm getting emotional i don't know why <laughs> Um, <laughs> you don't have to. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't. I didn't mean to that for that to be um a, no, I, a deep question. Um, just to like believe in yourself and um and it, that everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, that's that. No, that is that's and a, to stay close to your friends and your family, like always. Yeah, friends and family. You're amazing. Sorry, and I have no, idea no don't you don't you worry. You don't you don't have to apologize at all. Um, you've been amazing, honestly. Thank uh, you a, guys. a sunshine in playtime podcast and in yeah. our studio. <laughs> you've uh, w for us. I think it was really important to actually get. We want to get more female guests on. Yeah, um, you just should. Just because I think it's really important for our viewers to understand women's perspective, our perspective as well as men. Um, and I think no better way to kind of start doing more of that with you. Thank You're you. a unique, wonderful woman. Um, if anyone wants to go check this beautiful girl on Instagram, good, please, we'll put all our socials in the, in the um, description. <laughs> um, and yeah, again, just thank you for coming along and, and having a nice little chat with us. Thank yeah, you thanks guys. so much. It was great having you on. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Everything. Thank you, babe. <laughs> thanks. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining Playtime <laughs> Podcast. Um, it's been wonderful. This may be the last app you see in this ep in this studio. We might be in the new studio soon. Uh, oh, could I come into the new studio? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you can come visit after this, actually. Um, so yeah, please make sure you share, subscribe, like, um, do all of that goodness. Follow our socials. Go see Eloise. We'll put all the uh, information in the description come box see me. come see her <laughs> um is there anything else we have to leave off you as well i think that's all you know um don't watch porn the only no the, <laughs> only, the only other thing is yeah don't watch porn and also um as you know miles and i have a production business called yes. playtime productions and <laughs> the way um, you said play playtime productions. productions and um yeah the website's live by the way the website's live yeah the website's live go check it out if you're interested in 
talking to us about podcasts, if you've got an idea, anything at all, or you're just intrigued by what we're, what we're doing, please set up a call with us and we will be in touch. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much and we'll see you next week.